Hey guys, in this month's Disney Rewind, we're going to be talking about Season 1 of The Mandalorian. So, before we head into our thoughts and feelings all on Season 1 of The Mandalorian, uh, spoilers? So if you've not seen Season 1 of The Mandalorian, you might want to stay clear of this video because we will probably definitely be mentioning some things here and there. So, Stephanie, The Mandalorian Season 1 airing on Disney+, Plus. the first big thing coming out from Disney+, Plus. it's the, the show they were opening up their whole channel with, or their streaming service with. So yeah, what did you think of The Mandalorian, Stephanie? I enjoyed it. It was good. It was fun. It had lots of awesome action. I enjoyed the characters and the storyline. I like the music a lot. <laughs> That's some really good music. <laughs> yeah, I really liked this first season as well. Um, it, it took me a little while to get into it. I wasn't like immediately on board. Um, it was definitely, it's definitely the type of show that it's like each week it gets progressively better and better, like each episode, uh, until you like reach that final episode and it's like, oh god, this is so good, you know? Um, but yeah, for me, it did take me, you know, like a week by week sort of thing. But yeah, I actually really liked that this was a week by week show. Yeah. I really liked that instead of like binging it because you, I didn't feel like we had to be on a timeline. Yeah. <laughs> um I really liked going week by week with the show and it just felt like a community experience because then, you know, an episode would end and you could go and see what people thought of that particular episode. You know, like everybody without was, getting spoiled. Yeah, about everybody's something. on the same page. You know, everybody's on the same page and it feels exciting week by week and everybody can go on about just any little thing, mm -hmm. you know. Whereas if you binge the whole thing, it's like you're not sure what you can and can't talk about, mm -hmm. you know. And there's just certain things that it's like, yeah, this needed to be a week by week show. Especially, you know, with the big reveal with Baby Yoda, you know. Imagine if this was a binge show, the Baby Yoda thing, you just get spoiled immediately. Yeah, and you then... Know? And then each week, how would you be able to have a new Baby Yoda meme <laughs> if you, like, just had a whole binging of it? Like, then that each week was more provided entertainment of Baby <laughs> of baby Yoda. But, yeah, I did really enjoy the show. Yeah, we, we mentioned the music. I really love the music of the show. There's just something kind of old-fashioned about it that felt like Star Wars, like traditional Star Wars, you know, with the music. Um... Yeah, I liked the characters. I wish some characters were in a little bit more because I felt like we were falsely teased some characters. You know, like, oh, yeah. I, like <laughs> I got the impression, listen, Cara Dune, mm -hmm. I got the impression that Cara Dune was supposed to be in every episode, just judging from the trailers. That didn't happen. Yeah, that um, was one of the disappointing things is yeah. how, how they led up with the trailers. And you're thinking there's going to be like this cool squad of people and there wasn't. But they're only in a few episodes until, each. <laughs> until the last episode. Yeah. The last two episodes. Yeah. I was really disappointed about me nah just being in one episode and she was killed off. Um, was she killed? I don't know. Oh, she was saved. Was she? Yeah. I know that there was someone who walked up to her, but what I they look like she I'm was sure dead. I'll go back so, to her. Yeah, she's probably going to get resurrected because I think she was killed. I think she was killed, but she she's going to somehow be resurrected back from the dead or something. Unless I don't remember what happened at the end of the episode, but I remember somebody coming up. Yeah, and somebody did, did walk. Did they extend their hand to her? No, they just walked up to her because her body was just laying there. Well, she was awake. No, she was. Her eyes were closed. She was either was dead. She, she was either dead or unconscious. It was hard to tell. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I liked, yeah, there was a lot of really good action in this, a lot of good action, action moments. Um, it's just a very quiet, it's actually a very quiet show. There's not a hell of a lot talking in it. <laughs> the Mandalorian, he don't like to speak that much. He doesn't do a lot of speaking. Uh, Baby Yoda don't really speak, he just sits there and oohs and ahs. Um, yeah, it's just mostly a, an action-heavy show more than dialogue. Um, and yeah, just a further extension of the Star Wars universe, you know, getting to see some other places and people, peoples that you've never seen before. I guess let's talk about the subject of the Mandalorian himself. How, what did you, what did you like about the Mandalorian and Pedro Pascal's performance? Well, after you ruined it, that he's not in the armor all the time. <laughs> 
yeah, for, for real, you guys, do you guys, are you guys aware? I don't know how many people are aware of this, but I found out, because Pedro Pascal is playing the Mandalorian, but I found out that he's not actually in the suit all of the time, that he's providing the voice, but he's not really in the suit all the time, that there's like two other stunt doubles. There's two other stunt doubles that are in the suit, and he's in it every now and then. Um, I don't know when, though. Um, they did a good job of, like, matching up, you know, body language. That all three guys, you know, it seems like it's Pedro Pascal the whole time. Um, so, yeah, I found that out because I think I think it had to do something about Wonder Woman, I found out. Because Pedro Pascal's, like, one of the villains in Wonder Woman, and he needed free time to do both. Wonder Woman and the Mandalorian, and yeah, since you don't see his face till that final episode, <laughs> you know, uh, that was just the easiest thing to do, that they had stunt doubles and he can do the voice work. Um, but yeah. Pedro yeah, now it's ruined. Yeah, I'm, now I'm upset. I'm upset I found that. I'm <laughs> and upset. then she had to go and share it. <laughs> yeah, I'm upset. I'm upset that I found that out, that Pedro Pascal, that ain't even him half the time. Probably more than half the time. It might be. <laughs> I love Pedro Pascal. I enjoyed I enjoyed him as Mandalorian. I like his uh, demeanor. Mm -hmm. uh, I like just him being just like super chill. Mm -hmm. Like anything could happen, and he's just like whatever. he's just so chill and relaxed. <laughs> he's he's cool under pressure. He he knows how to handle pressure at any given time. He he never like panics. You know he never panics. It's like he he's always to think of a he's always able to think of a solution. Whatever he needs. <laughs> He's a, he needs to do a little better job at being a dad. Yeah. He's getting there. Yeah. He's, he, he's, he's, he's slowly growing. He's definitely not father of the year. <laughs> he is father <laughs> of the year. How many times did he say little baby Yoda? Well, still, half the time he seems reluctant. <laughs> half the time he don't even know what's happening. It's just sheer luck that something happens and he's like, Oh, I saved that baby. <laughs> But yeah, I like I like with him. He does a great job. Well, you know what? He, depending on who's in the costume, all sub all subjects in the costume do a great job at um, interacting with Baby Yoda, little Baby Yoda. Mm. Um, That's something I really liked about the character, uh, the, him, um, because he comes across. You know, he's a bounty hunter. He's he's rough and gruff. He he's just there to do a mission, get paid, do whatever. And that's something I really loved about his character that he, he you know, he initially goes after Baby Yoda, not knowing that he's going after Baby Yoda. He's just doing his job, you know. And he he develops guilt, essentially. You know? It's like he turns in the baby so he can get his bounty. He feels guilty about it because it's like, well, What's wrong with this child? Why do they want it? Maybe I should save them, you know. And yeah, that's that's where his journey goes from there. And he, he it's like he develops. He he starts developing more feeling and emotion, you know, because it seems like the Mandalorians, the Mandalorians are like very stoic people, you know. They're very stoic people. They don't really have very much emotion or feeling about anything. It's like the job is the job, and our way of life is the way of life. And if you if you stray from that, you bring dishonor on everybody or something, you know? <laughs> so it's like, I like how he developed, that he's starting to kind of get out of that frame of mind. But at the same time, you know, the helmet, he's still, he's still holding on to that helmet like, I can't let anybody see me, you know? It's like, he's willing to kind of sacrifice other things about his way of life, but he can't sacrifice that helmet because he can't <laughs> let anyone see who he is. Do we want to talk about that, the reveal, when he finally, when we finally got to disappointed. see Pedro Pascal? <laughs> like, I kind of didn't want to see him. I wanted to. I was like, you don't cast because Pedro Pascal and not show him. He doesn't match the voice to me. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been happier if they just would have left it on. I wanted the helmet to come off, you guys. I was like, I'm not watching this whole damn show and I don't get to see Pedro Pascal. <laughs> And now the one thing that did is dead. Hmm? The one thing oh, that did see him. IG, yeah. Yeah, let's talk about some of the other characters. I am highly disappointed that poor IG-11 died. Me too. That was Taika Waititi, he, right? Yeah. It didn't even sound like Taika Waititi. I enjoyed 
I was glad when they they had that he was brought back. Mm. And then his sole mission in life was now to protect the baby. Baby Yoda. Yeah, I really liked IG. He's just badass. Out of all of the robots we've ever seen on on Star Wars, he's probably the most badass. I didn't think anybody could beat um, the one guy from Rogue One. What's his name? K2SO. K2SO. I didn't think anyone could ever beat him. Hey, look, they got all the droids that are always sacrificing themselves, making you feel oh. bad. Because you think, oh, I won't have no feelings for this mm -hmm. droid. And then a new droid comes out, and you're always like, oh, God. Yeah, I loved IG. Um, Cardoon. I really liked Cardoon. I wish she had been in it more. Yeah, I'm disappointed that she wasn't in it. Like I, like I mentioned, the trailers were almost misleading because I just thought people were going to be in it more than what they were. Uh, I really liked Cardoon. She's very interesting. I feel like there's a. I feel like there's just a really deep backstory to explore there eventually I, 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 at some point. I almost feel like Disney Plus will not go into that because again, I feel like that will be something they're going to have a book or a comic. Mm -hmm. You know, I just feel like they're not going to explore that character mm -hmm. unless she gets her own. They series. get her own show. <laughs> it seems like people, you know, lots of people like her character. So yeah, that'd be cool to give her, you know, and then it would help. It could be like The Walking Dead, you know, that once Walking Dead ends, you got Fear the Walking Dead, mm -hmm. and then there's this new one coming out. So through the years, continuous. So they could do that with Star Wars on Disney+, Plus. Mm -hmm. that when The Mandalorian's not on, then you've got the Cara Dune the Cara series. Dune series. And then, it, they can't call it Dune. They can't call it Dune because there is a Dune a TV series coming out based off of the book, so they can't call it Dune. <laughs> But yeah, they can start doing that with some of the Star Wars characters. Well, like that how way. Walking, like how yeah. Walking Dead does it. Yeah. Continuously, you, there's like just a tad bit of a break in between, and yeah, and you have another show with another show. Yeah, I really liked her character a lot. I was kind of pleasantly surprised with her because I just, I the casting initially just wasn't impressed with the casting because <laughs> she's right. she's a wrestler, right? Like something like that. MMA. She's a, yeah, she's like a wrestler. I think she's more MMA, not wrestling. Whatever she is. <laughs> I think she's only done a few acting things, hasn't she? And I was just kind of concerned, like, oh god, can this can this woman even act? <laughs> but yeah, she she impressed me. I was very pleasantly surprised with her, and I, I think she just really got into the character. And she had fun with it. She's just really cool. I liked her whole look. She's adorable. Yeah. <laughs> I had to look him up because I couldn't remember how what his name was. Um, the little um, Ugnot mm -hmm. guy. But his name was I think God. it's Quill. Yeah, starts with a K, but I think it was pronounced Quill. That's what it sounded like to me. God, they killed remember. him! Why'd they kill that him? Was sad. That was sad. And his little beast. Those mm -hmm. things are cute. They were <laughs> at first. I was like, "What is this ugly monstrosity?" But those then they start. Are, they're, they're, I, they, they start growing on me. They were like, okay, like they were like a tadpole as it's trying to turn into a frog, and it got stuck. Yeah, it got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> it got it got stuck in the pretty ugly face. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're weirdly cute though. They're, yeah, yeah, I liked his character. I was really upset when they killed him and Ig. Him and, and Mando, I liked their chemistry because, mm -hmm. like, his character as well was kind of like, because then he would say, um, I have I have spoken mm -hmm. or something. Is that what he kept saying? Yeah. As he'd be like, I have spoken. So I like, like, they bounced off well yeah. with each other because he's also got that personality where he's like, you're going to do what I say, you know? Yeah. Um, I also started to really like that one guy, um, the guy who initially gives him the bounty, you know, that first episode. Grief. 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 Grief? 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 I believe it was. Not Grief Carga. Carga. Carl Weathers, right? Yeah. I just know that it was Carl Weathers. Uh, I really liked him. Initially, I didn't like him because he was mean. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> he, was he, was, he was, you know, the foil to the Mandalorian. I was like, dude, you need to go away. But still, um, I worry with him in, in the future. He has the potential to flip-flop all over yeah. the place. Yeah. He's kind of like, he's kind of like... Oh, like Lando, mm -hmm. Blair, yeah, they trust him, but at the same time... He can flip-flop. He can flip-flop Because somewhere. the way his character and his personality is, he, he looks out for himself and what's, be her, what's best for his interests. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he is a potential liability like yeah. he can flip flop all over the place but yeah i mean i was really liking his character in those last couple episodes once he kind of flipped over to, to mando's side mm -hmm. i was like yeah okay i like you again you're cool <laughs> i'm really excited to see more uh how is his name pronounced Gian, giancarlo esposito mm -hmm. 
what was it, Moff Gideon or something. Yeah. I'm really excited to see more of him because they set him up as a big villain at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. So, and he's alive. He pulled out that dark saber, right? Mm -hmm. He pulled out that dark saber. He's alive. He ain't dead. So they kind of set him up like he's definitely going to be a bigger antagonist for which like, is good two. because that will give season two like a more solid focus yeah. like because this who did the big too. bad who the big bad is this did too but it kind of there, you weren't kept certain, bouncing yeah you weren't certain who the big villain so was yeah because, having him will keep it solid yeah because even the one guy the client mm -hmm. is what they were calling him i mean even him it's like he's villainous but he's he wasn't really the main villain yeah, this you moff, know he's working for somebody moff gideon was in in this more in just two episodes yeah <laughs> than than the client was. yeah <laughs> In the whole first um, time. So is that it for kind of the major people? Yeah. Before we jump into Baby Yoda? Because I, I, I wanted to make sure we talked about stuff, you know, before we get into Baby Yoda. Because we can all have a whole video about Baby Yoda. How did we feel about Baby Yoda, who is not Yoda. It's not Yoda, but we have no name for him. We just know that he's part of that species that Yoda's part of. It's just, it's, yeah. So we, the simplest thing is just to call him Baby Yoda. We know he's not Baby, we know he's not Yoda. <laughs> but yeah, how do we feel about Yoda? Because Baby Yoda is like the big surprise that comes out of this season. He wasn't on any of the posters. He wasn't in any of the promos. Episode 1 They ends, did great with that. They did, I can't believe that did not get out, you guys. Yeah, no, no toy merchandise. Because I was even reading articles, them talking about... Um, you know, because why are there no Funko Pops yet? Why is there no merchandise? Mm -hmm. it, that was all deliberate because mm -hmm. they did not want that to leak about Baby Yoda. Mm -hmm. So yeah, bravo for Disney for kind of holding back on that because you know how Disney loves to sell merchandise, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, Baby Yoda is the big just surprise that comes out of this at the end of episode one and it's it's shocking. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so how do we feel about Yoda? Um, probably the most freaking adorable thing that has ever lived. Uh, I thought Porgs were cute. <laughs> Baby Yoda has just risen above Porgs, the Nifflers from Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. <laughs> oh, what else? I saw a list of uh, I saw a list on a website, and it was uh, ranking the cutest uh, critters of the decade. Yeah, <laughs> like, I want to see. And that. Like, I think Baby Yoda was like the top critter, and then like there was a, like Porgs and Nifflers. <laughs> uh, like it was all the cute things of yeah. the decade, you know. Yeah, I love Baby Yoda, and he it, and he's so strong and powerful for just a little thing. But every time he does use his powers, he like he he, he passes out unconscious, well, and did, it's so cute. <laughs> well, he did good the last the last thing he did with um the, the, the flame. Yeah, he just fell on his butt and was kind of like whoo. I'm, the whole so thing, he did good. He didn't pass out. But yes, he's so cute. He's so powerful. I mean, there's that one. You know. I like that the I like at one point they show how truly powerful and what a threat he can kind of potentially be because there's that one scene where Cara Dune and Mando you know they're sitting there playing a game right they're no arm no wrestling. oh arm wrestling that's right they're arm wrestling and <laughs> Yoda I mean he gets a little vicious right there and he starts no, he, he, no forces, daddy. he forces Cara Dune to to force choke herself. You know, and it's actually, because, yeah, there's Baby Yoda. I don't think he forced her. She was just putting her hand up like, what is, what is her? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, he, he he's choking her, and it kind of reminds you, like, yeah, he's really sweet and cute and precious, but he's actually very powerful, <laughs> you know? He's, he's a threat, and it's like you kind of see why people might be coming after him, but that's mm -hmm. the question. Why are all these people after him exactly and, and like you so, know? so far we're only seeing that bad people yeah are after him but are they um, the bad people that's the thing too are they the bad people? well they're like <laughs> all imperial people that's true they are they're, yeah they've only shown imperial people after him um maybe there might be something in this next season where there is good people you know mando's gonna probably think they're bad but they are more on a good side because maybe they are like we gotta do something. <laughs> so yeah, I like I like little things like that with Baby Yoda and kind of it, it's a big question about who Baby Yoda is, his potential, why people are after him. It feels like the second season will be me we'll, exploring we'll, a lot of stuff. We'll bring him in too. Yeah. Uh, be more like yeah, what's going on with him? Yeah. Maybe yeah, does hopefully. it does it have something? I, I guess some Rise of Skywalker 
things here if you've not seen Rise of Skywalker or potential spoilers here. But yeah, does does Senator, does Pal does Palpatine have anything to do with Baby Yoda? You know, is because now that we know from Rise of Skywalker that Palpatine's alive, is he possibly after Baby Yoda? You know? Mm hmm I don't know if that's a possibility. They're saying that next season, um, very established past Star Wars people characters. It, it seems like it would be uh, yeah. will be there, in yeah. this season. Yeah. Well, they said it sounded like they meant multiple. Yeah. So uh, it is kind of like, ooh, who's coming on? Yeah. And hopefully, it's not just like a stupid cheesy cameo. Yeah. Like hopefully, it is something. It's a for real arc. Yeah. That arc, the multi arc that thing. helps push. Yeah. The characters forward, not just hey, yeah. look who we ran into. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Baby Yoda was definitely the highlight of the season. Just every episode, I looked forward to him doing something cute. Um, uh, what was your favorite episode of the season? Did you did you have a particular favorite episode of the season? I really enjoyed this last one. I liked that everybody finally came together. They were the like, Avengers of the Star Wars <laughs> universe. You guys, there was finally like you know something going on, like. Yeah. Like, pure story-based. Yeah, bringing insane. everything. Yeah, like, all of the various different threads that have been established throughout the season, it's like all those th threads finally came yeah. together and bringing all these random people together. <laughs> yeah, I like that, too. Okay, my random weird... Yeah, I'm trying to think what was my, my favorite random. My random weird episode that I loved, which I was kind of surprised about, I love the one where... Um, Mando, he got recruited by that guy that he knew from his past, and then he teamed up with, with all those 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 criminals, mm -hmm. and they they did they were basically doing a heist to get that one guy out of prison. Mm -hmm. I love that episode. <laughs> <laughs> I love that episode because it just it felt so different compared to the rest of the season. Yeah. Like it had a whole different type of tone and feel to it. Like, I loved like the kind of ending part mm -hmm. when he was gathering everybody up, mm -hmm. like to. You thought he was killing them, but he wasn't. He was and putting I love them all that in their Because who? I can't remember if it was through the whole scene or just one certain scene, and and uh, the lights were flashing, mm -hmm. and he was like popping up like yeah, closer it was and kind closer. Of scary, yeah. I I just don't know what it was about that episode. I just got the biggest kick out of that episode, and I really liked that one. Plus, all those characters, yeah, because none of them were dead, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think he killed any single one mm -hmm. of them. Right, that all means those, show. Yeah, all those characters have the potential for a jailbreak. And to come after him. Or they might team up again. Yeah, or yeah. And plus, that episode had uh, Tonks. <laughs> uh, Natalia Tina. Uh, she was that lady with the green ears or whatever, the hair, or whatever, you know, those, those green extensions, whatever that species. She was a Twilight. Yeah, those things. Uh, I loved her as that character. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I want her back. Then and where's her Funko Pop? You know, they released all those new Funko Pops, and where's hers? I want one of her. <laughs> I wonder why they just decided that episode would be the one that had, like, cameos. Yeah, there was know? so... Like, everybody everybody was somebody. It's like, why, why was it that... Because, yeah, it was the most random episode mm -hmm. for the season. It was a very different... That, I think that's why it stands out to me, because it was kind of just a refreshing change of pace to the rest of the season. You know, they were just doing something completely different on the spaceship. Because, yeah, he, Mandalorian, he kept touching down on different planets. But yeah, that was he was down right on spaceships and uh, some. And, and and Matt Lanter was in it. Mm -hmm. That was nice to see. Him. That was awesome. <laughs> that, that was yeah, because it was like oh. <laughs> Maybe they'll start bringing some other like people from. Uh, that'd be cool if they start bringing people on from like the other animated series, mm -hmm. Clone Wars or Rebels. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, not the same character. Mm -hmm. But, you know, hey, I was a voice, but now look at me, yeah, I'm like, on the show. Like, yeah, if you've watched everything else, you're like, oh, I know who that person is. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was my random weird episode. So, that's it for season one review of uh, The Mandalorian, I guess. Yep. Overall, really enjoyed season one. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely anticipating season two. Uh, season one, I think season one had a very kind of slow start and pacing to it initially. But I think it's worth it because it starts building up there by those last couple episodes, and it's well worth it. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really anticipating season two now that the big story has been established, all the main characters have been established. I'm really anticipating season two, just really kind of just go flying headfirst into things. I, I hope season two though does not like add too many new people. 
Like, that are, you know, we already had these few characters, even though several of them died. Yeah. You know, but I hope that they don't overload, like, new characters again. Yeah. And that, like, Kara Dune does pop back up, you know? Yeah, they made it sound like Kara Dune's are gonna all go off and do her own thing. Yeah, but, well, because she's with, um, Carl West. <laughs> yeah. So, it seems like they're probably gonna stick together. They kind of have no choice. Yeah. Especially him. Yeah. <laughs> she's kind of used to that stuff. He's, he don't think he's too, too used to having to be off on his own. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm looking forward to season two. Looking forward to more um, Baby Yoda. Uh, <laughs> Is he gonna grow, Winnie? I hope he does. He's still gonna be stuck. If Disney knows what's good for them, they won't have Baby Yoda grow up because it's like Baby Group, you know? Mm -hmm. They had all the Baby Group merchandise, but then it's like no one cared about Teenage Group, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like bring it's like bring back Baby Group. <laughs> so yeah, it's like if Disney knows what's good for them, they're gonna keep Baby Yoda, Baby Yoda for as long as they freaking can. Um, but yeah, love Baby Yoda. I'm really hoping. Uh, Pedro Pascal might take off his helmet at some point again. I'm just really hoping there might be a whole episode where he just takes off the helmet. Is it too much to hope for? Yeah. It's, he's probably never. We probably got our one and only tease of what's under the helmet and it's never going to happen again. I love that IG was like the video game character that magically has a first aid spray on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's a for real first aid spray in Star Wars. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, overall, really loved the season. Can't wait for season two. Is is that it? Yep. You feel the same way? Yep. Okay. So, you guys, uh, did, have you guys seen season one of The Mandalorian? Uh, what are some standout moments for you? Uh, did you have some issues? Um, what do you feel about Baby Yoda? Everybody loves Baby Yoda. Um, so yeah, let us know your thoughts and feelings about season one of The Mandalorian. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye guys.